video. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here uh, to talk about tablets, iPads, etc. Um, I was trying to do a complicated setup that I have given up on because one of my devices was not able to connect, but that is okay because it was the least useful to me. So uh, what was going to be was uh, behind the scenes so you could see what I'm actually doing as I am writing on the, on the tablet, but that didn't work out. So I am going to share my uh, PowerPoint, actually, let's do. So this came up earlier. When you share, if you intend to do more things than just show a PowerPoint, it's better if you share your screen, uh, your entire screen, rather than just the PowerPoint, because that way you can move seamlessly without accidentally Holy cow, I think. Am I still here? You are. Okay, good. Can I thought you? for a second that my uh, my computer had restarted. <laughs> no, you're good. So my first question is, are you seeing uh, the presentation or the one that has the next slide? We are seeing tablets and iPads, whiteboards, annotations. Perfect. Notes. All right, so let me get my thing. So I am getting my Wacom tablet that I'll talk to you about in a second, but I'm gonna put it right here because I'm gonna use it right away. I am getting my little glove that keeps me from, from my palm doing a touch sensitive thing I don't want it to do. I am getting the little pencil that comes with the tablet. So welcome. It's not doing it. There you go. So, um, welcome to what am I doing here? Pen. There you go. So, I am going to be both telling you about. Ooh, let me get you guys out of the way. You are in my field of view. There you go. So, I am going to do that again. You know, it was part of my intention not to waste your time with me trying to figure things out, but it happens. So my first tip here is put the pencil in the, the right direction or you won't be able to do what you're trying to do. Um, so the first thing I would like to do is to show you something you can do with your students. And I am going against one of my own uh, pieces of advice which is to try everything ahead of time instead of figuring it out on the go during class. But this is something new that I figured out, so I wanted to try it with you guys. So I am going to get off my share, and I am actually, uh, the PowerPoint is kind of in the way, discard. I am going to share my whiteboard and I am going to ask you to join me and I'll tell you how in a second. So can you see my whiteboard? Yep. All right. So uh, the moving pencil is because I am moving my hand over the tablet. So you can draw whatever you want. Assuming it lets you. So Hey, somebody already jumped in. Good. So you can write whatever you want. This is a cube. So I want you to go to the top part of your screen where it says view options and choose annotate and then use your mouse or your trackpad to go ahead and uh, write something. And if you want to unmute yourself so I can hear your reactions, that would be great too. I don't mind the the chaos. Awesome. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can fun. See, you could draw, you know, pros and cons and then have your students fill in or type or give emojis. Uh, 
and do a collaboration right there. You could also have a problem that you can call somebody to the board for them to, to solve it. So uh, you could have different breakout rooms with the students, <laughs> I'm laughing at some of these, uh, with the <laughs> students uh, then collaborating on solving one thing, different groups. So, so there's many potential uses for this. This is not anything I used myself. This is just something I just discovered I could have used. Uh, but the ability to collaborate, uh, I see that Hannah has demarcated her box. Nobody go in there. <laughs> so um, uh, I, at the end, we can play more with these kinds of things. And uh, you can, you know, help your students through figuring out how they can collaborate, how they can contribute, even if they don't have their own tablet. All right, so uh, when once I get out, I have my own Zoom set up to uh, store any whiteboards that are done. I think that depends, depends on how you do your setting. Uh, so I don't know if this one is going to save or not. But basically, every time you clear the screen or every time you get out, it will save a copy that then you can use to share with your students or for future reference or to add to your notes. So I am getting out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Thank you for playing with me. That was the most fun I had all day. <laughs> I Same. Start with that and we can try more of those things toward the end. Lourdes, um, how did you get your whiteboard started that then we were able to jump in on? So at the bottom, screen, share screen, uh, you, in the same way you share a PowerPoint, one of the options in the share is whiteboard so you can do this uh, with your computer and uh, use a trackpad or a mouse as your writing device or you can use one of these uh, simpler tablets or sketch pads to write and uh, but you can also use an ipad if you connect with an ipad you can uh, you can share screen and then whiteboard is one of the options and, uh, cool. and then each person should be able to jo join in with whatever capabilities they have. And we can, we can do more of that. So I'm gonna go back into the share and get my PowerPoint back. So something you should know is that, you know, I'm not an expert, uh, but I am a heavy user. So uh, there are, might be things that I do not know how to do, uh, or I might have some ideas of how to test it, but uh, just my, my, uh, my intention is to share what I have learned. A lot of the things that I have learned actually are, uh, happened before the pandemic because I was motivated by my visual disability to try some of these things like uh, bringing my notes to class and and things like that, uh, but they are not specific to a visual disability. Everybody can use them. So uh, the setup, one of the pieces failed, which was the overhead camera that I was going to have for you to see what I was doing behind the scenes. But I'll try to narrate everything I'm doing and uh, to show you in the computer camera anything that I think you should see. Um, then I will go into the overview in the, of the various uses. This is where I will show you most of the things uh, live. Again, fingers crossed, thing, things work. And I have a couple of informational slides that will go over. Uh, hopefully, as I am showing you things, I will tell you most of these things. But I put them in there to make sure I didn't forget anything. And uh, so you had it organized. In, in one place. I suppose I should send this little uh, PowerPoint uh, to the collab folks so that you can add it to the to the SharePoint. Um, and then, depending on how much time we have left, I am fully open to questions, to letting you join in with your own tablet, to try things, whatever you want, for as long as people want. Okay? So, uh, I actually also have a regular pad that is uh, old school to remind me the, of the things I wanted to, to do. 
so that I don't forget anything. Um, so I decided to go chronological because it was just too overwhelming to think of the best way to, to share this. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to divide it before, during, and after the pandemic, uh, because there are things that can be done that have nothing to do with remote uh, offering of the courses. So actually, I also wanted to show you how, as you are doing your PowerPoint, let's try this again, because earlier I didn't do it right. You can annotate. So with a PowerPoint on the bottom left, you will not be able to see it, but there is a little pen that, and then you choose pen or arrow or something. So I'm choosing pen that will allow me to, while showing a slideshow, to mark things. So I'm going to start with what I did before the pandemic. And the first time I tried to do this, I tried to do it live in a classroom and I had no idea how to write on it, even though I knew how. So now I know, <laughs> but uh, it's usually the bottom left. When you go to the very, very corner, there's a couple of, of uh, little icons there and there's one that looks like a pencil. And that's the one you want to choose if you want to, to annotate. So we're going to start here. So before the pandemic, uh, the, I had two main uses for uh, my iPad. This was specifically iPad. And uh, but any other smart tablet like a Galaxy, Samsung, Samsung Galaxy or anything like that would, I suppose, do the same. Uh, one was when I was on the go, if I wanted an easy way to read resources, um, I could carry them in my iPad and just like you read a book, you can read a PDF. So that gave me some freedom to not have to be attached to a computer when I was on the go. Also, if there was uh, something I wanted to review quickly, um, I could put it in there. The other one was, again, motivated by my visual impairment, which is that when I bring my own notes to class, I cannot see them unless I put the, the notebook very close to my face, which I probably, I think is probably awkward for the students. And then I'm also awkward for me because I'm trying not to put it too close to my face to freak people out. So I'm putting it too far away and not being able to read very well. So what the iPad did was give me the ability to type things as big as I wanted and also the ability to kind of uh, zoom in as needed. Uh, but then I realized that there was more to it because once I had my notes typed, when I wanted to revise for the future, it was a lot easier to revise than when you had them handwritten. Uh, in the past, I asked, I had sticky notes, you know, sticky notes on top of sticky notes about the things that I wanted to improve or I needed to rewrite it. So uh, that gave me the flexibility to, to do that. Of course, you can do that and print it out, but having the iPad made it a lot more seamless. And the technology did catch up. At first, it was kind of hard to put the files in the iPad and make sure I had the most updated, but, uh, then uh, with the cloud, you know, filing systems and also uh, the different apps being able to read PDFs a lot more easily, it became a lot more seamless. So I was a little ahead of the time. But um, and then also, uh, actually, I want to show you something. So I'm going to get off the PowerPoint. I'm probably going to regret doing so much getting. I'm going to keep the changes I made this time. Uh, so much back in and out of the PowerPoint, but I wanted to show you a few things. And one is that regardless of how much you want to use it or not, everybody should put all their teaching related files in OneDrive. We have one terabyte of space that we can use. And I don't even use my computer as the main place where I keep my files. I put it all in OneDrive. And then I downloaded the application that allows me to see those folders as if they were folders in my computer. And it actually syncs some of those down so I can work offline. 
So I have found that extremely useful because then I can uh, just find my all my files regardless of what I'm using. The iPad, the classroom, podium computer, my own computer, even the phone. One time my iPad ran out of battery and I used my phone to access my notes as if my phone was a tablet. Uh, so here I have OneDrive and then I can go find my courses right now because my computer doesn't have as much space. I'm only syncing a couple of courses, but I can go in and find all my files. And it doesn't matter what device I'm in. I don't have to be saving them. It keeps uh, keeps copies. So if I mess up or if I lose something, I have previous versions. So I, I really recommend that, even though it has nothing to do with the tablets themselves, but the easy access from the tablets. So uh, let's see. I wanted, yeah, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Another item that uh, I thought about but had not pushed was using uh, the tablet for grading. And I can clearly remember Scott Koikendall given some presentation, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago about how to use your iPad to grade. And I thought that was awesome. And I, I think Liz All was also onto that. Uh, but there was, you know, there were technical issues that you needed to be willing to deal with in order to do that. What program do you use to open your PDFs and things like that? So, so even though I had the, the desire to do that, I didn't do it. Uh, then the spring came and suddenly in a matter of a couple of days, we had to move to remote learning and, uh, one of my worries besides figuring out how the heck to run a zoom meeting was that one of my courses was extremely math heavy and i felt like i needed a way to do um, live math so i went to lamson and i asked them if they had any sketch pads i could test out to see if i liked and this is where i got to, to play with one of these, a Wacom tablet. And it was pretty easy to set up, just plug it in and letting the computer ask you what permissions it needed and what things it needed to download. And you just say yes to everything. Um, to the point that I don't remember the details of how I did it, but I tested it out, seemed to have a uh, promise and I borrowed it to bring home and I tested it with everything I could think of, you know, um, web applications to write, writing in Word, uh, annotating a PDF, the whiteboard. And it seemed to work regardless. Whatever program that allows you to, to draw, this thing will draw. It's like a trackpad. So, so that makes it very, very easy. Um, let's see. I you know, I had this list and I'm going forward without looking at my list. Um, yeah, I already told you that. So the first thing I did was to, yeah, I had my files here. So I'm getting off again. <laughs> so once classes started right after spring break, and I had my dynamic scores. So uh, what I had to do was annotate in the middle of class. So uh, what am I? Temporary jam jam examples. So let me show you. So I would open my PowerPoint, my uh, Word file. This was the Word file that I had used in the past to make the notes that I would bring to class in my iPad as a PDF. And uh, it's not opening, there you go. So during class, I would scroll through and uh, you know discover, I, I leave myself these blue notes to remember, to tell them things. And uh, I had typed the math before, but then I would just in class, you know, I would 
Uh, first of all, I need to move the Zoom thing so I can see that menu. So if you choose draw, then you can choose to write. Oh, it's gigantic because I made it gigantic yesterday. So let's get back to a normal size. The first two are better. So uh, I would say, you know, remember. Uh, one of the things I have to say from the, <laughs> this is not responding as it normally does. What well, two things? Uh, it takes practice to be looking at the screen while you're writing on a tablet. So uh, it's not as seamless as you would want. Also, uh, if you have to download the updated drivers and firmware, or it might not work as well. Like it was really, really, really clunky. And then I downloaded the the firmware update and suddenly I could do anything again. So uh, sometimes you need to go and see what updates. You're gonna see lots of cubes today. So uh, you can write as you're writing because it's slower. What I would say is just keep talking while you are writing uh, so that students don't, you know, get stressed out or bored while you're typing, while you're writing very slowly. Now there's other ways to do this a lot faster, but this was the first way that I was able to, to figure out. Um, let's see. The other thing that happened right away was that I used it for grading. So I wanted to show you a couple of examples. These are PDFs that I loaded into my iPad, and I will show you that in a second, but right now I'm just showing you the already done examples. So this was, you know, something that the student uh, submitted electronically. By the way, I also used the iPad to redact the name but I was able to just write on it like I would write on a paper. And uh, I find that a lot more satisfying than, you know, insert comment and, and typing your own comments, which is it's fine too, but I found this way, this way of writing, of grading electronically to be a lot better for me. Uh, and oops, so that you don't think I'm such an evil professor, I'm gonna show you another example. So this student did a lot better. They actually took a cue from what I had been doing and they actually drew their own things using their own tablets. So, um, which I thought was awesome. I didn't require them to do that at all. This person started doing uh, their own uh, diagrams out of their own uh, initiatives. Uh, if I did ask for a diagram, I would ask them to at least take a picture and put it in, but this person went all out and, uh, you know, did the diagrams themselves in the same way that I, I had been doing them during the semester. And uh, some of them, here's another example, actually used their iPad to do the assignments. Uh, this person did not put their name on it. <laughs> uh, I actually erased the name that I put in knowing who it was. But uh, he did this in his iPad, which was awesome. And then just emailed me the, the work. So um, let's see. I already showed you how to annotate the WordPad. Yeah, and I showed you the slideshow. So what I am gonna do now is I am gonna attempt to share the screen from my iPad, which I didn't do in class, uh, but some colleagues did do share slideshows and things like that directly from their tablets, their smart tablets, and run the slideshow, annotate that slideshow. 
but I am going to connect my iPad to show you how I graded using it. So uh, this is not something I would normally be sharing in class, but I'm going to be sharing it here so you can see what I do. And here's the iPad, which you would have been seeing. It can see what we're some kind of inception thing. Uh, so I am going to hit share screen and it gives me many different options, including the whiteboard, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen and it warns me about it. And I had to say start broadcast. And hopefully, yeah, it's coming. So now you can see my screen. So another hint is that if you are joining with more than one device, choose which one wants to you want to, to have the audio. In this case, I'm choosing my computer to take care of the audio because if you don't mute your other devices actually it, it cannot even be that you mute it you had to say join without audio or dial in and then not dial in because feedback will happen if you have more than one device uh, joined in at the same time so when i logged in the ipad i said that i was going to dial in for the sound and then i didn't so that there's no uh no feedback that doesn't let me talk okay so now i'm going to switch my screen and i am going to go to my onedrive and that's the last thing i had open but i am going to oh i was already in jam jam so again download the app to onedrive and put it in your devices so that you can access any of your files from anywhere. So I am going to put the iPad down here. I am going to go to, uh, where am I? Examples. So I want to go back to one of those tests. Uh, let's go back to the nice test. And I want to grade it, right? So I go to the top right where there's that little pencil and that gives me the writing uh, options at the bottom. So I'm gonna choose the red pencil there. Um, actually, if I go to the right where that red dot is, I can switch the color, the width, the transparency, all sorts of things. So let's write in green since I graded in red. And uh, I have my little glove to keep me from my palm, you know, causing problems, thinking is I'm using three fingers or whatever. And then I can just write in the same way as I would write. So this is a lot easier to write than with the tablet, the Wacom tablet. So the iPad allows you to do just do seamless writing as you would. And I'm going to say, I don't know, I can say, oops or give him a happy face or say 3x plus 1 equals 4 therefore 3x equals 4 minus 1 and x equals uh, 1 you know <laughs> I can do whatever I want to annotate or uh, you have to study more by the way, I, <laughs> these were files, once I graded them, I shared them with the students using uh, OneDrive so that they could see the file and they could download it or do whatever they wanted, but they could see all my feedback without me having to email it to them. And uh, I'm working on a copy, so I'm not ruining the students' uh, nice test, but uh, I find it so much more satisfying to work this way. Um, of course, if, if your handwriting, like mine happens sometimes, is, you know, turns messy when you're busy, you need to be careful. Lourdes cannot write. And you can use the same thing to sign a PDF or whatever you want. So it, this, this is useful regardless. And something I didn't mention, was that uh, in order to annotate PDFs, you don't even need any special software. 
OneDrive, if you are going through your OneDrive uh, files and you choose a PDF, it already gives you a little pencil that you can choose. So you don't even need to be in any specific app. You can just write whatever you want and, when, and it saves it automatically. So you don't even have to worry about it not saving. So once you're out, it's all there. And it actually syncs with whatever devices. Like when I finish this, my computer's version is going to have it already. So it is very, very, very useful. All right, so I'm going to say done. And I'm going to go back to my files. And let's see, I think I had other iPad demos. So I can show you also, let's see. Um, something I did in the spring as well. Ah, look at me, I'm trying to do my computer, use my computer to choose. I'm still on the iPad. So uh, for example, here's some really, really complicated topic that we needed to cover during the pandemic. And I would go during class and, you know, use the Wacom and do whatever writing I needed to do. But what I was also doing was afterward, I would take the Word file and I would, you know, more calmly annotate it with thoughts and hints. So um, again, this would have been something I was scrolling. So I, there's all sorts of extra stuff that we discussed during class or I added as, a, as we were, you know, for clarification or, you know, um, trying to make it smaller. So our connections with previous topics. So you could do this live and I did, but afterward, that, that was with the Wacom, but afterward using the iPad, I would add to my leisure the extra things I wanted to share. Now, now that I know how to share an iPad, I probably would use the iPad better than the better than the Wacom. And in order to do that, I would have to go into the Word file. So you can see on the top left, top top right, the little word icon. And that will open the actual file. And then it's going to be exactly the same. You choose draw but I'm in the iPad instead of my computer. And then I can, you know, choose my pencil, it's already chosen. And then I can write in the way, same way I would write on the board. So I could have a blank Word file where I write like if it was a board, I can have the whiteboard in Zoom and write like if it was a board. Um, I can invite the students to point out things and mark things. And some of these things I didn't use as much or as well. I know better now, but uh, there are things that you can very, very easily do. So uh, this is not because I'm tech savvy or anything like that. Anybody can do this. Uh, you just need to not be afraid to do a little trial and error and test what works for you and what doesn't. So I could add more things. Uh, let's do it in a different color so it's obvious and let's make it bigger and you know you can write whatever you want in there um, so let me get off again uh, and I had I'm sharing the iPad so I'm gonna get off and say screen broadcasting stop and i say stop and i'm back to you guys but then i want to go back in so i go back to zoom and i share again and this time i choose the whiteboard and again i can write whatever i want actually you guys want to try jumping in see if you can annotate this as well even though it's coming from a different device i expect it would work fine too yay <laughs> so um regardless of if it's from your ipad or from your computer using the wacom 
uh, this can be a tool for collaboration. But I did not try this during the semester, but it, this is something that would definitely be very useful. By the way, I bought myself this iPad with the overload I had because I was teaching so much above my normal workload. So uh, <laughs> I guess that was a, a good thing. I'll let you right there for a moment. <laughs> While I double check my pad to see what I wanted to do next. Lost my pencil there. All right, so I am sorry. I am gonna head out again. Uh, let's see. Oh, in the iPad, there's a little arrow you have to click. So I end the broadcast, and I am back to you. And I am gonna put the iPad on the side, and I am gonna go right back to that PowerPoint. These are the technical acrobatics that I was a little concerned about. Normally you're not doing all these things at once. You're only doing some of the things. All right. So once it loads. So I used it for all those things. I didn't use it for PowerPoint slides as much, or at least not in that way. Oh, I forgot to show you one more thing. Uh, sometimes though, uh, one of the courses I was gonna teach, I taught, was given to me at the very last second because of personal uh, shifts. And I didn't have as much time to put together the materials. And I actually, in at least a couple of the topics, I went into a slideshow, put out the, the image I wanted, and then I just annotated it handwritten instead of typing like you would normally do. And I don't know if it's true, but it felt like that went, that was a lot faster. So I did use that as well. I annotated a PowerPoint offline to then show in class and share with the students. Uh, the collaborative work, I think I would like to try bet more of or having students jump in and solving problems or you know, doing brainstorms that everybody can write at the same time in the same way I would do it in class in the board for certain topics. Uh, when we switched to in-classroom teaching, uh, like many of you uh, and most of my colleagues in meteorology, we did hybrid teaching where we were in the classroom and uh, students could join via Zoom. So some of these uh, annotation on the go and things like that uh, went away because I was writing on the board, but I could see how I could continue doing that even if I'm in the classroom. Uh, I did continue the electronic grading. I didn't want to be handing papers and materials back and forth. Uh, so I continued getting all the submissions electronically and I continued uh, either, either getting them from the students as PDFs or turning them into PDFs myself and then just hand grading using the iPad, which I found extremely satisfying and extremely useful to share with the students immediately after grading. And also a couple of times I have had to go back to consult what I graded or the grades that students had for assessment uh, uh, initiatives and things like that. So it's actually very useful to still have a copy of the graded items, which you do not have when you hand it back on paper. Uh, after the pandemic, I, foresee that I will want to continue doing some of these things that I have found extremely useful. I feel like I've gained extra skills and extra technology. And uh, I, I especially like the electronic work submission and grading, but I could definitely see other collaboration uh, items and or annotating live items that I could continue using. Um, so, if we compare the two, the tablets are, the Wacom tablets and other sketch pads are way cheaper. You can get them from less than a hundred, but there's some fancy ones that have a screen and everything. 
the iPads are definitely more expensive, but you can get some inexpensive ones. Um, so they're both easy to use, easy to set up. The, the Wacom, as I said, works like a trackpad. So once you get used to not being, not looking at the pad, but looking at what you're writing on the screen, it, it you know, it works with anything. The iPad is, is amazing. It's you're writing like you would write on a piece of paper. Um, the Wacom is a device that's plugged into your computer. The iPad is its own device and it has its own zoom presence. Um, so it depends on what you want. And something that I want to mention here is uh, the hints is that you don't have to do it all in one way. It's okay to have different tools that you prefer um, for different uses. It's okay to start small and then grow from that. It's okay to prefer you to use your iPad with a certain application. It is not one way that is right or wrong. You can, you should try things. You should not be afraid to try things. And if uh, it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Try something else. Also, Google it, ask your colleagues, go to the help desk. So do not be afraid to tackle these things. Just just try, which try it before class so that the students are not just sitting there while you're trying to figure things out. Uh, it can happen, but that's okay. But it's better if you try it all before. Uh, the two finger glove thingy that keeps the touch devices from recognizing your your palm as another finger is extremely useful. You can probably train yourself to to do well without it, but I I was too too handsy with the tablets, so the, the glove helped significantly. Uh, let's see what else I haven't mentioned. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think I have it. okay, so if you do get an iPad. You should know that there's two generations. You, you, first of all, you will need a pencil that you have to buy separately. And there are two generations and the, all the new iPads work with the second generation, but they do not work with the first generation pencil and vice versa. The old iPads do not work with the second generation. So if you have your own iPad and you want a pencil, make sure you're buying one that is compatible with your iPad. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. And what I mentioned, if you join in with more than one device, make sure one of them does not join with sound so that you can avoid feedback because just muting the device is not enough. You still get the feedback. All right, so I am gonna get off the PowerPoint because uh, I guess the last 15 or so minutes, I would like to answer questions, try things, uh, figure things out with you guys, whatever you Marcus, guys. Can I ask you to show that glove again? I, I missed when you talked about it earlier and I've never seen that before. And that's always been my problem with using a tablet is my- what do you want? Oh, the glove, yes. The glove, yes. yeah. So, so it is just a simple little thing. Yeah. I actually just bought myself a second one because sometimes I want to use the other hand. So it is, double-sided so you can use it on your right or left hand that's what i was wondering yeah yeah it covers two fingers yep. it's designed yep. for the last two yep. fingers yep but i actually used it backward the other day trying something and it leaves the other fingers free so you can scroll and things like that for sure did you so, just get that on like amazon or yeah i ordered one out of amazon great. Um, that is so great to know. it's like a drawing glove or tablet drawing glove yeah. or two finger glove yeah so and Be becky's asking whether or not you could use just a regular old pair of gloves that you've cut some fingers off of well, i, I think would so. assume as long as they're as they're not capacitive that right yeah, that it should be fine you would have to test it out but yeah in in general yeah. it will it should work yeah um as long as they're right that's there's no conductivity between your hand and the surface of the tablet that's so brilliant i've just never seen that before and solves a lot of problems for me with using a tablet. 
I was actually, the, the reason I got it was for a different thing. And now I cannot even remember why I got it. And when I got it, I realized that it didn't work for what I wanted, but then it worked for this other thing that I really could use it for. I'm trying to think of what else you would use a two finger glove for, but you know, I'm sure. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions yeah. or um, comments or uh, anything for, for Lourdes? So what is it called? Okay, so let me type here, uh, two finger drawing. It's gonna find us the product. Glove, tablet, add tablet to the. And uh, I found it very easy to, to find it in the search and you'll see like a little hand that looks. Did you know that this existed or just like stumbled upon it or? I stumbled upon it. As I said, I was trying to figure Oh, that's right. You said it was for something else. Yeah. 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 But I can't even remember what it was because it immediately turned into this. It wouldn't have even occurred to me to look for that. <laughs> yeah. This is something that the pandemic did. And Becky, do you have a question? Me. Yeah. I have a little bit more complicated question, Lourdes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you know? Um, so I should probably be getting uh, sponsorship deals from Dropbox because like I just put everything on Dropbox um, and I haven't really used OneDrive. Um, I was a Dropbox junkie before we had access to OneDrive. So I just didn't want to change everything over. And especially because sometimes universities change their mm -hmm. vendors or whatever. So um, a lot of what you showed us has to do with how things work in OneDrive. I have on one occasion graded stuff with an Apple Pencil on an iPad using mm -hmm. Dropbox, but it was tricky and I needed to download a special PDF app and it, I couldn't get it to work quite well all the time. So are you saying that if you use OneDrive and you download an app, that drawing tool is there for Word without yeah, any yeah. other things? Is, is there for PDFs. For Word, mm -hmm. you have to open the Word. Mm -hmm. uh, that I can tell you that I did, I'm a big proponent of not sticking to just one thing. So I also use Dropbox. So uh, the other day I opened uh, PowerPoint in Dropbox and I drew some diagrams for, for my book. Uh, and then I passed to Dan to see if he could draw them using software. But uh, it was different, but not hard. So I opened the file in Dropbox and then I told it to use PowerPoint and then I could just draw normally with the iPad. So I don't know, do you want us to draw, try this? See if it will work. So I did it in the iPad, but I'm gonna try in the computer. And if anybody has any uh, questions, actually, you know what? Dropbox also has an app. I'm gonna share my screen, but somebody jump in if you have any questions, but I'm gonna, okay. So again, I'm trying this uh, without ever trying it before. So I am gonna go to, ah, to a Dropbox file and I'm gonna do the easiest. Uh, let's see, I need a PDF. Do I have any PDFs around? Yeah, I, I have many different files in here. Shared items, no. Uh, sorry, I, I, I wasn't ready for this, so I didn't. Okay, here's some PDFs. So I'm gonna open a PDF and I'm gonna try to use the Wacom tablet to write on it. This is from Dropbox. Uh, so I need to find, this is a, from Dropbox in my computer. So what I probably need to do is search tools. Do, 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 do. So I'm gonna type draw and choose drawing. And it's thinking. So now I'm going to, now I'm using my wake up tablet. Oh, so it is a little clunkier because it's trying to make each letter an object. Uh, so, but it works even for in the computer. So I imagine it works perfectly fine with an iPad, probably a lot better with an iPad. 
So uh, what I would say is if you have a different way to do things and you want to say this works, just try it and see what happens. What I can tell you is that in the past you had to use specialized apps to open PDFs and that is not the case anymore. It is uh, seamless most of the time. So you just have to try it and see if it works. I think that's what made the difference for me, not having to use a specialized app, just being able to write on it right away. So it's uh, it's just occurring to me, I thought I'd mention it um, for those of you who um, might be piloting Canvas this spring and for anybody who's really new to Canvas, one of the greatest things in Canvas, it, this is gonna be funny coming from me because as people know, I'm like a consummate ungrader, but they have this tool called the speed grader. So if you do like to grade, um, it's a really, really excellent tool. <coughs> and it's particularly effective if you use it on a tablet. It allows you to um, flip through students' assignments and annotate them on the tablet, including add typing comments or drawing um, on their submissions right there in the speed grader. And then you assign a grade to it and that gets submitted directly back to students. So it's kind of an aside, but I just thought I'd mention it because it seems a little bit related to what Lourdes has been showing. And I would think that if you're looking at it in the computer, you can use a Wacom. You absolutely, yes. And you if you are grader looking at it in yeah. the iPad, you can you use the iPad, it, yeah. but you would need to buy a pencil. A pen, yeah. Have, yeah. Well, Although you can probably use your finger, yeah. It's it almost so makes grading fun, which is like a ridiculous thing for me to say. I know, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's true. So I'm not paying too much attention to the chat. I'm sorry. So if there's any other questions that you want me to ask, answer, just jump in. It's kind of hard to pay attention to the It is. Chat I'm terrible at it. Um, I don't think we missed any. I think people were mesmerized by your juggling act. <laughs> so what I would say is when you're doing this with students, it's probably better if you don't have to do so much juggling, right? So if it's just a PowerPoint and a, and a Word, but you're doing them both from the same device, that's probably better rather than have to go in and out with different ones. But I just wanted to show you as many options as possible and test it ahead of time. Like Eric, I can definitely visualize map uh, analysis by hand using this. Yeah, it's one of those things where you got to try and decide if you're going to jump in, right? And right. and then, like you said, try it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, you need an iPad. The trick would be, the <laughs> trick would be getting the uh, the data into uh, a PDF because um, some of the images that have the data on them are not PDFs, so they're not easy. Right. To work so with. you need to trust that you can convert anything to PDF, but you can probably, you can, I have converted a lot of things to PDF just using the preview software in the Mac. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, with the PC how easy it would be for any format, but most programs these days have a save as PDF option. Uh, I think a lot of it, 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 the best way to do the easiest annotation is with a PDF. So if you find ways to say what you need to PDF, you'll be able to do it better. Yep. I have a little question about whiteboards. Yeah. In a whiteboard on Zoom, you can make a text box and type in, um, but in my experience, you can never get back inside that text box. Am mm. I wrong about that? I think you are right because I don't know for a fact, but when I tested it with Dan, he wrote something and he, he said, Oh, see if you can add to it. And it just made my own text box. So, but I didn't try to revise my own text box again, something else to try, but I, I rather just write it by hand. But that could be a good option for anybody, anybody that doesn't have a good way to right by hand they could do they could do text boxes so uh given the time i should probably wrap up right i i would be happy to share any more wisdom with anybody that has any questions as i said i'm not an expert but i can tell you my guesses or my experience and do take advantage of all the help resources that plymouth state 
uh, provides. Uh, you know, a lot of people that either know how to do it or can help you figure it out if they don't know how to do it. So uh, my, I hope the big takeaway is that uh, there's a lot of things you can do with these devices and you shouldn't be afraid to try. And you might discover uses that are really helpful to you, whatever you do in your research or your teaching. Um, so, so I encourage you to not be afraid to fail, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lourdes. That was fantastic. Um, Thank you. Really, um, I think gave lots of people lots of ideas and I'm sure we'll give more ideas because people will be able to watch the recording of this, which I'm gonna ask Sophia to go ahead and stop for me um, and let you all